Welcome to the next episode of the Dark Web Deacon. Before we begin, be sure to smash that subscribe button, click the bell to turn on notifications. New videos are published every Monday and Thursday, and as always, be sure to like and provide comments. So what are Bitcoin mixers? Well, Bitcoin mixers are software or services that let users mix their coins with other users. They do this in order to further improve their privacy of their Bitcoin transactions. But wait, I thought Bitcoin was anonymous. Well, the reality is Bitcoin addresses are pseudo-anonymous, meaning they don't in themselves reveal the identity of their owner. They can often still be linked to real-world identities. For example, if you withdraw Bitcoin from an exchange where you've identified yourself, the exchange knows that the withdrawal address is yours and all the associated personal information, probably your name, your address, uh, maybe even a driver's license that you use to sign up for that Bitcoin exchange. There are also more advanced techniques such as blockchain analysis to tie Bitcoin addresses to real world identities. By mixing your coins, users can obscure the ties between their Bitcoin address and their real world identities and subsequent Bitcoin transactions. This allows them to use Bitcoin more privately. So how do Bitcoin mixers exactly work? Well, there are a number of mixing strategies that have been proposed and tried over the last few years. They range from fully centralized solutions where all users trust a mixer uh, to solution where users don't even trust anyone and they're much more distributed. I'm going to review two of the most popular solutions available today. First are centralized mixers. These are services that accept Bitcoin payments and send different Bitcoins in return. If many people use a particular mixing service, it becomes increasingly difficult for an outsider to tie any of the incoming coins to any of those outgoing coins. This breaks the transaction trail, offering privacy to the users. Centralized mixers leave two big problems unsolved. One is users need to trust the privacy with the mixer. Since the mixer knows exactly which user sent and received which coins, the mixer could reestablish the trail of ownership. If the mixer is willing to share this data with an interested party, the user would lose their privacy. And secondly, perhaps even worse, is the mixer could refuse to make the return payment back to you, basically stealing the user's bitcoins. More modern mixers have tried to solve this problem and have been fairly effective in doing so. CoinJoin mixers, for example, let a large group of users cooperate in making one large payment to themselves. So basically, rather than a centralized mixer, it's a decentralized mixer. So if 100 users all send exactly 0.1 Bitcoin to a new address they control, and then merge these 100 transactions into one big transaction, Everyone gets 0.1 Bitcoin back, but no one can see where it all came from. So at the end of the day, you can think of Bitcoin mixers a little bit like um, swapping credit cards with, with, with somebody. So you swap a credit card with your neighbor, they swap theirs with you, and then based on the spending habits and transactions that they perform, it's not going to be tied back to them or, or to you. It'll be tied back to the original owner of that address. So this way it does shield you being able to make those transactions. Why would you want to mix your coins to begin with? And is coin mixing just for criminals? Well, first it's not just for criminals. You might want to mix your coins, however, to guarantee your privacy. In short, you might not necessarily want the world to know where you're spending your money. Two very basic concrete examples of this that we can maybe think of is one, a dissident journalist may want to get paid for his articles without the regime, the country that he's working against finds out about it. And two, let's say a, a Republican in a Democrat town may want to donate to his favorite politician without drawing a rage mob to his house. So both of these are examples of privacy um, needing to be implemented in order to complete some type of transaction without having some type of negative consequence. Of course, criminals do benefit 
from all sorts of privacy technology as well, including privacy gained from mixers. And governments and law enforcement have taken full notice of this. 2019 was a brutal year for coin mixers. Governments around the world cracked down on the practice, shuttering long-standing and very popular services. In response to aggressive European law enforcement efforts, in that summer of 2019, Bitcoin Blender announced it would close after half a decade of operation. In February 2020, Ohio resident Larry Harmon was arrested and charged after operating the Helix coin mixing service and the Graham's Darknet Market search engine. So what are some popular mixers that still exist today? Well, there are a number of popular Bitcoin mixers that have cropped up over the last few years. Just to be clear, I'm not recommending any of these, especially centralized mixers because of the unsolved problems mentioned above. However, my crypto mixer is one that's out there which emphasizes ease of use and is a, has a simple interface. Wasabi Wallet is another popular Bitcoin wallet and has a coin gen mixer built in. Similar to Wasabi Wallet, the Samurai Wallet also offers coin gen mixing services called Whirlpool. An alternative option to mixing coins is using Join Market. Join Market allows users to merge transactions into bigger transactions through regular coin join based services, which also helps obfuscate their trail of coins and protect your privacy. So, what is the future of mixers and should I use one? Well, the most popular mixing services are currently centralized, either trusted or untrusted which does mean they could be shut down relatively easily by authorities. So far, however, many mixer and services continue to operate unencumbered. But if they are centralized, depending on the jurisdiction that they're running out of, they obviously are much more easy uh, and susceptible to be shutting down. If centralized mixers do continue to get banned and shut down, which I do believe they will, decentralized mixing services will definitely take their place. And because of the nature of being decentralized, they are much harder to shut down and control. Now, should I use one? Unless your life, liberty, or property is in jeopardy with a Bitcoin transaction, I would not recommend using a Bitcoin mixer due to the lack of trust, the potential for scams that currently exist, coupled with the lack of clear guidelines of what is legal and what is not for any individual, which can definitely open the door for government and law enforcement overreach if you end up getting caught using one of these services. So because of, because of all of this, um, obviously privacy is something I value. I think it's something that everyone should value, but I think there are ways to at least stay fairly pseudo anonymous through the blockchain, through other cryptocurrencies such as Monero, Monero um, and doing things. There are a lot of other services that are starting to crop up online. I'll do a future video on that, that allow you to kind of obscure and obfuscate the use of your credit cards or your personal identifiable information for online transactions. So I think there are a lot of good techniques that are starting to come up that are much more in the legal uh, uh, driving lane versus Bitcoin mixers which you know, I wouldn't want anyone to lose their Bitcoins or their financial transactions due to some of the scams that are definitely very prevalent with some of these services. Thanks for watching. And as always, please like, subscribe, and provide comments and turn on notifications by clicking the bell in order to check out future videos published twice a week.